When we tell our own stories, how do we do it? What details do we include? What themes do we impose? Would someone who is with us on our journey agree with our version of the story? Are we being honest with ourselves? After 40 years of leading the Israelites through the desert, Moses' story is almost at an end. He now knows that he will not enter the promised land with his people. And so he gathers Israel together to make sure they know exactly what is expected of them. And if Deuteronomy makes one thing perfectly clear, it is that God's promises to Israel are not a given. They are conditional upon Israel's behavior. The future depends on their adherence to God's commandments. And so in this week's parasha, Ekev, Moses tells the Israelites, Kol ha-mitzvah asher anochi hayom tishmerun, you must keep all the instruction, all the commandments that I enjoin upon you today. Lema'an tichyun urvitem virishtem. So that you may live and thrive and inherit the land. The promise will only be fulfilled if the Israelites obey the mitzvot. And the very first mitzvah Moses shares is, V'zacharta et kol haderech. Remember the long way that Adonai has brought you through the wilderness. Now, this poetic translation from our Chumash elides what I believe is the key word in this verse. Kol. All. V'zacharta et kol haderech. Remember your entire journey, not just the highlights, not just the happy episodes, not just the points of pride. The medieval commentator Rabbi Chizkiya ben Manoach states that v'zacharta et kol haderech serves to prevent the Israelites from covetous and idolatrous behavior in the future. In other words, they need to remember their story so they don't repeat their mistakes. But Chizkuni's interpretation is challenged by what Moses says next. With great detail and passion, Moses recounts the episode that represents perhaps his highest and lowest point in his life. He describes his experience of receiving the tablets of stone on which God inscribed the Ten Commandments. And then, just as vividly, he says, I saw how you had made yourselves a molten calf. Thereupon I gripped the two tablets and I flung them away with both my hands, smashing them before your eyes. Now here is where Chizkuni and I disagree. Moses has no use for a negative object lesson. His journey is almost at an end. There's no need for him to use his memories, as Chizkuni suggests, to remind him what not to do. So what purpose does it serve for Moses to share his darkest moment in such a public and enduring manner? I assert that it's for the sake of his own wholeness, for Moses to conclude his life as an integrated individual and not as a bifurcated soul seeking to conceal any hint of darkness. And this is key because our parasha teaches us that God wants more for us than mere survival. Lma'an tichyun urvitem. Remember, 
so that you may live and thrive. When we bury parts of ourselves, even those parts that we may feel are ugly or shameful, are we truly living? Or are we damaging our innermost selves? A rabbinic colleague struggled with this very question and shared her story publicly in an article titled, Leaving Shame Behind. The rabbi, a recovering alcoholic, had been looking at a potentially incriminating book with her sponsor. When she realized she had misplaced the book, she was terrified that a congregant might find it and she would be exposed. She eventually found the book and her secret remained a secret. But in the process of searching, the rabbi came to a realization. She writes, I had to come clean. I couldn't continue to feel this way. I ripped up the sermon I was going to give on Yom Kippur and wrote a different one. And in that sermon, the rabbi shared her struggles with substance abuse, how deep her need to drink was, how toxic that need had become in her life. She also shared how she reached out for help and found it how she worked day by day to find, in her words, solid ground. She feared that revealing herself as an alcoholic would end her rabbinate, but it didn't. In fact, it brought her to new heights. When she shared her story, her whole story, the floodgates opened her congregants came to her in droves to share their own struggles and those of their loved ones. She wrote, I was no longer afraid and ashamed. I had become a real person to my congregants and my relationships with them improved. I gained the trust of my community. Today, I do not have shame about being found out and I'm here to help you. By revealing her struggle, by being honest and open about her whole self, the rabbi was able to find personal healing and to connect deeply with others. This story is a powerful embodiment of another commandment in this week's parasha. Moses says to the Israelites, Ma Adonai Elohecha Shoel Meimecha. What is it that Adonai your God asks of you? The answer? To love God with all your heart and all your being. Umaltem et orlat levavchem. And cut away the thickening around your hearts. God is telling us. Remove the protective layer we have built around our hearts. Allow ourselves to be vulnerable because we can't open our hearts to only things that make us feel good and keep out the bad feelings. If we close our hearts in order to dull our pain, we risk numbing our sensitivity to joy. On the other hand, when we let ourselves be vulnerable, we are also open to blessing. And when we let our scars show, we reveal our resilience and our fortitude. When Moses shattered that first set of commandments, the broken pieces were not buried they were not kept secret. They were not hidden away. They were placed in Aron Habrit, 
the Ark of the Covenant, carried side by side with the newer unbroken set. The broken tablets could be seen as a reminder of the Israelites' greatest shame, but they are also a sign of repentance, recovery, and renewal. And so, when God follows the promise that we will live and thrive with the commandment, Vizacharta et kol haderech, remember the entire journey. We understand that we can only truly thrive when we remember and tell our whole story. The good, the bad, and the ugly, that which has laid us low, and that which has raised us up. We shine a light on our dark moments as a sign of our strength and our humanity and our hope. Shabbat Shalom.